active active HA clustering. Okay everyone, in this video we're gonna be configuring our Palo Alto firewalls in active active HA mode. We have firewall PAL1 and firewall PAL2, both of them equally active in forwarding traffic. So both units will provide load balancing along with redundancy on your environment. So PAL1 and PAL2 will be able to send traffic inbound and outbound. And they're also going to be configured in an active active state, meaning that if one goes down, the other one can still take over the sessions and continue forwarding. So you not only perform redundancy or you not only enable redundancy, but you also uh, maximize your investment by using both units at the same time rather than having one in passive with the active standby or active passive mode that we discussed on our previous video. If you have one in active passive mode, then one those firewalls will be just sitting around doing nothing until something happens and it needs to take over. In active active, both of them actually forward traffic, both of them are actually operating. In case one goes down, the other one can still forward the traffic. We're going to be doing that routing, NAT, so address translation, routing, the policies, authentication, basically everything that the Palo Alto does will be active on both units. So in this demonstration, we're going to go into implementing our existing environment. So we on our previous video configure active standby. What we're going to do now, we're going to convert that into an active active mode. The only difference that we're going to do here is that we need to allocate a third HA interface that will allow us to do a VR sync. And we're going to be able to exchange the routing information and the routing config across the two units. So we need to configure Ethernet 1 slash 5 to be an HA interface and then allocate this as our HA3 interface. Not only that, but we have to configure virtual IPs. We have to configure a local IP. So remember, before we only had one IP active and because only one firewall was actually active. Now, because both of them are active, we actually have to configure an individual IP or a unique IP per firewall and then configure a shared IP or a virtual IP that the cluster will use or that your end users or resources will use to to point in order to hit either one or two. Same way with the outside. I have my lab environment, so my demonstration environment, I have my outside natted via this address space. So in this case, we were using one to two as our outside in active standby, but now that we're gonna put both of them in active active mode, then I gotta configure the other unit to be 123, and then I'm gonna move my outside to be 121. So this will be my shared virtual IP between the two units. So my destination will point towards this address, but in this case, this can forward or this can forward. Same with my internal network. I'm gonna point my users to go to the 10001, but because we're doing active active, either this can take over PAO1, so that can own the session, or PAO2 can own the session. So the active forwarder will be either that two or that three. And that's how we load balance traffic across the two units. Another way that we can do is doing floating IPs. So difference between virtual IPs and floating IPs is that in a virtual IP with when we do ARP lower sharing, both of the units can receive and, and send ARPs. Uh, both units are actually active. If we use floating IPs with active active, then the floating IP will be binded to a particular Palo Alto. And it's not until that fails over to the other firewall then the floating IP then will move. So it, the floating IP will basically attach to one. So even though that we have active active, the floating IP will only be binded to a particular instance. And that doesn't mean that we cannot load balance. We can definitely load balance using floating because then I can assign one floating IP for a specific set of resources and then I can assign another floating IP to B and then point half and half, right? Well, it, it works, but I think it's better to go um, IP ARP low sharing if that's the case, because then you just point it to a virtual IP and either one or two can take over. But with floating IPs, you can assign a virtual IP that flows in one particular unit, and if something happens, it can go to the other one. So you can set, well, if, if you fail, then fail over and move the floating IP to the other unit. And we're gonna be configuring that and this will be done actually on our next video. So we're going to do the HA portion now. We're going to change this into active active. We're going to configure those interfaces with those specific IPs. And then we're going to change the HA mode to be a active active. 
Once we do that, we then will go on to our next video where we're going to configure a virtual IP on both the inside and the outside. And we're going to do failover testing and you're going to be able to see the behavior that your end users will see if you have a failover scenario where one IP, you know, one side of, of your cluster goes down, one PA goes down, the other one will take over. Again, it should be non-disruptive or not impacting because we're active active. So both of them are actually forwarding traffic. You should not even see a drop of traffic. It should be seamless. So we're going to configure that virtual IP. We're going to allocate it onto the cluster and then each one will have individual ones. Once that's done, we should be able to test connectivity from the internal PC to the outside. When we're doing active active, another thing that I got to emphasize, oh, I got to tell everyone, it's that in active active, your NAT statements cannot be duplicated between the two firewalls. And it's not that they cannot be duplicated, it's that you cannot have a single statement that will be shared across two firewalls. The translation rules, they have to be configured individually. So even though that I configure a NAT rule here and it will be replicated here, it only will be attached to one particular unit. So I got to create the same NAT rule for the other firewall and attach it to the other unit. And you're going to see that. Don't worry, we'll configure that on during the virtual IP video. But for now, let's go ahead and convert this to active active. And if for some reason you you don't understand how to do the, the complete HA config, I will suggest that you go on to our previous video and take a look at active standby because basically we're taking over the config of active, active standby and we're converting it to active active. So we're not just going to configure the whole thing from scratch. We're just going to change the mode to active active and you're going to see the difference uh, between the two of them. So let's begin. Okay, so if you remember our previous video, we configure active standby. So we have PAO1, PAO1 is the local active, and our PAO2 is currently the passive one. So let's go ahead and configure active active. Let's allocate an IP to, so, so we, based on our slide, we mentioned that we need to allocate a specific IP to each firewall because now this address cannot be duplicated because we're running active active else you're going to have a duplicate Mac or a duplicate ARP because both have the same IP. We don't want that. So we need to configure specific IP per firewall. And then once we're done with that, we should be able to enable active active. So let's go ahead and do that. That's uh, PAO1. We're going to select this interface right here and we're going to change that IP. As a matter of fact, I don't need to because this will stay in 122, so I think we should be fine on PA1. Let's uh, change that to be 123. Let me show you back the diagram so you're more familiar again. Okay, so if you see our diagram, we're going to change this address to be 123. So instead of having the same address, we need to have them, we need to configure 123 on this, and this will remain in 122. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll do dot two here, which will, we'll, we need to change that to dot two. And then the other one will be dot three. So let's go ahead and configure that real quick. Go ahead and uh, IPv4. We're going to configure this in 123. PAO2. Press OK. And we're going to do the same thing for the other interface. And we're going to allocate dot three here. Okay, so we have that one. We don't want to commit because we're in HA mode. So if I commit here, this can override PAO1. We don't want that. We're just going to make the change, but we're not going to commit. Let's go ahead on PA1 and let's change this one. Okay, let's go ahead into IPv4 and this one will be dot two because I need that dot one. Dot one address will be our virtual, so I'm going to change this to dot two. Press OK. This will stay the same. Now, we need to change the mode into active active. So let's go ahead and do that change right now. On device, we go to setup. We already have enable HA. Group ID is one. Now, here it goes. This is where we change that mode from active passive to active active. We'll press yes here. Now, because they're active active, each firewall will need to have a unique ID. PAO1, we're going to leave this in ID 0, and then PAO2 will have ID 1. Both units are active active, so each one must have a unique ID. So we'll leave this in 0. We'll re, uh, the same IPs as the active standby, we don't, we're not going to change that. It will be the same. So in case you're doing active active from the beginning, you know, you're not going to change from active standby. You're going to do a completely new setup. I will suggest you see the active standby video and just follow the same procedure. The only difference will be that you're selecting active active. So let's go ahead and device zero. We'll press OK here. Now we have a device priority. 
even though that we're running active active in the palo alto one is primary and the other one's secondary so one unit will still have some sort of ruling over the other one however both of them are actually forwarding traffic it's just that one will be active primary and the other one will be active secondary we're going to leave this the same we're not going to change our device priority preemptive we're going to leave this in preemptive and we're going to use the recommended ha timer settings control link we're leaving the same way we're just going to use the same address space same for ha01 same for ha02 and finally in active active we then need to enable packet forwarding so in case we need traffic flowing from one palo alto to the other so you're seeing traffic that hits PAO1. Let me bring the slide. So if traffic for some reason came and hit 01, so in this case it went all the way from 01, then the return traffic for some reason hits 2, you can use the interface and you can forward traffic between the two units even though they are hashing over one interface and then returning over the other one. So that's the uh, reason why you want to definitely do packet forwarding on the HA3 interface. Okay, let's go ahead and select. And our HA interface is going to be 5. Why I don't see five here? Do you remember what we have to do in the beginning? We have to enable the HA or make the interface as an HA so we can then select it here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Go on to network, interfaces, five. We're gonna select this to be HA. Okay, we have it in HA mode. Let's go ahead and see if uh, we now can do that active active config. Let's find if we see it. There you go, we have it here, awesome. Now. This is where we select. We want to have that virtual routing in sync between the two units. By selecting this option, we can have the virtual router sync between the two firewalls using this HA3 interface. Also, if you want to do a quality of service sync, so if you're doing QoS on both firewalls, you select this so that is or anything that happened from a quality of service standpoint you need to make sure that you have a sync so you enable it here in our case we're not doing qos and we have a whole timer of uh, 60 seconds i will leave this in 60. i will not you know change the whole timers i just leave it in 60. section owner selection okay so you want to say you want active primary to be always the session owner select selection so so the active primary firewall will be the owner of all the sessions you select primary device. Else, the first packet decides who's the owner. So if either I hit PAO1, I'm gonna become the owner. If I hit PAO2, I'm gonna become the owner. That's the difference. I am going to leave this in first packet. I wanna take advantage of that, you know, across the two units. Session setup. So this is how we do that load balancing between the two files. We can either select the primary device to be the session owner or the session that will be established will be on PAO1. Or we can select IP module, which is the Palo Alto's way of doing load balancing. And this is the recommended way that Palo Alto does HA active active with IP sharing. So make sure that you have IP module or you can do IP hash if you want or first packet as we talked about. So in our case, I'm going to leave this in IP module. We'll press OK. And uh, yeah, we should be good to enable on PAO1. Once I am committing, I am going to do the same on PAO2. Press commit. OK. Now, even though that I haven't configured this one, this will not replicate to this because I just changed the mode and it will be a mismatch. So I don't need to worry about this overruling or overriding my configs on this one. Let's go ahead and configure this. And again, we're gonna make this an HA port. Okay, let me go ahead and change this to HA. We'll press okay. Go on to device, high availability. We're gonna select the setup. And we're going to change this to be active active if you want to change this to active active then everything that is active passive from a configuration standpoint will be lost are you are you sure you want to change the mode to active active we'll press yes and now the only difference here is now i select the zero to be pao1 this one which is pao2 should be one so we're going to select this as one for our device id we're going to leave this in config sync. we're going to leave this the same now we're going to leave the same priority as we did on active standby we're going to leave the same IP address space for our HA interfaces. If we go on to active active config, this is where we want to select that uh, third interface for HA3. Select five. We want to synchronize the virtual router and we're going to leave this in first packet IP modular and we are good to go. Press OK. OK, while that's going on, I'm going to check on PA1 to see how it's looking. This is finished. Let's take a look at the dashboard and sure enough, 
I am mismatching because I am still in active standby until the commit completes. Then I should be able to see some activity going on here. So let's uh, wait for that. Okay, so as it's done, let me take a look real quick. Let me refresh. And sure enough, active, active. We're still waiting for that secondary unit to finish his synchronization with the primary and we should have an active, active cluster. If you take a look here, we now have an HA3 interface up. That means I am able to synchronize that routing table across the two units. And I think it's looking all good. Let me see if uh, we have some activity. Not yet. Let's wait for this a little bit and see if we have full green across the board. Uh, let's give it a shot one more time. Boom. There you go. Now we're fully up and running and active, active. I have my local unit to be active secondary and the other unit has become the active primary. I have both firewalls active, active. I should be able to forward traffic using both the units. Now what we have left to do is configure virtual IPs and test failover. Okay, everyone, in our next video, we're going to take a look at virtual IP load balancing with ARP sharing and floating IPs. Thank you for watching.